Hey, everybody. Welcome to Vista Friends Home Office Hours Live. I am your host, Olivia Christian, and my coffee is kicking in right at the optimal moment here, especially after that energizing music. Uh, I'm excited about this show because we've got two amazing guests. New York Times bestselling author, serial entrepreneur. You know her from Nasty Gal, from Girl Boss, Sophia Amoruso. And a little bit later, we'll be joined by Lauren Jennings. She is the founder of the Best Me Conference. But before we dive into that, I just want to let everybody know that if you've got questions for Sophia or Lauren, please go ahead and put them in the Zoom chat. And if you're watching this on Facebook, please go ahead and put them in the comments. I'm going to answer as many as I possibly can. Um, all right, but let's dive, dive in. Sophia. Can you hear me? Are you there? I see your beautiful I'm face. I'm here. I can hear you. I heard the music too. I was like, are we live? Are we? But I was like, all right, I'm going to get into it. It's morning. I need this. <laughs> yes, you and I are in Los Angeles. So we're just kind of waking up here for everybody else joining around the world. Welcome. Um, you know, I started by giving a little bit of an introduction of who you are, what you've done. But I'd love to start off just by saying one, thanks for joining us, but two, just let everybody know how you would describe yourself as what you yeah. do. Well, I'm an introvert. No, I'm just kidding. I'm Sophia Amoruso. Um, yeah, I founded a company called Nasty Gal when I was 22 out of my bedroom and then grew that to over $100 million in revenue and wrote a book called Girl Boss that was a New York Times bestseller and then started a company called Girl Boss and there's Netflix series called Girl Boss and now I'm I'll always be like the girl boss, but I've moved on. I, um, I'm an online educator. I have an online course called business class. That's a 10 week program for entrepreneurs. And yeah, that's like the really short version. That's like the shortest I think I've ever done that, but that's the gist of it. Yeah. I'm a serial entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah. I think serial entrepreneur is the best way to describe it. You do a lot of things. I mean, you've written things, you've grown communities, you've created products and services. Um, but you mentioned business class. Business class, I understand, is somewhat of a new venture. You kind of dip your toes into it thus far, and the new class begins in March. But tell me a little bit about the moments or the surroundings, the events that led to you having this idea to create business class. Totally, totally. And I feel like, you know, from fashion to, you know, Girl Boss was kind of a media company, and this is very different. It's like an online kind of a digital course, like education business. The businesses all, all have all been very different and the brands have been relatively different, but I feel like Nasty Gal, you know, here's the evolution. Nasty Gal, like, you know, helps women dress to feel confident. Mm -hmm. And then Girl Boss, you know, once you're confident, it's like, okay, like what's next? Like Girl Boss really provided a lot of, um, you know, inspiration and guidance but not just straight up like, here's what you need to do. Here's what you need to know. We've talked about a variety of things. I'm really focused on entrepreneurship now. And this era has pushed a lot of people off the ledge um, into starting businesses. And that's a very scary thing. It's very unfortunate in some ways. It's also really exciting. And there's so many people who have gotten laid off and started businesses and are like stoked. <laughs> um, so it's just, it's a really kind of ripe time for people to be starting businesses. And after 15 years of doing it, um, the highs and the lows and everything in between and managing hundreds of people, not successfully. Um, I just really, really wanted to put everything that I've learned into a course. So it's 10 weeks it's like over eight hours of video. There's live Zoom calls with me um, every week. And there's, you know, there's this cool flight manual that you get. So it's, it's like, it's really dense. It's not like a yay, like two hour, you know, I learned, you know, it's a, it's a commitment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you talking about the fact that you're going into entrepreneurism, especially after 2020. Some of us were forced into it. Some of us were like, this is the sign I've been waiting for to do the thing that I'm passionate about. But it is an emotional roller coaster, especially if you are a solo entrepreneur. And something that I've noticed about you, we follow each other on Instagram. Thanks for that. Um, but you seem very um, open to sharing the realities of the journey, the hard stuff, the mental health issues or challenges around, you know, getting up every morning and pushing yourself. And you being a public figure, it's not, you know, it's a very different experience than being someone who's just kind of in their small communities growing a uh, growing a network growing a business but you're very public face and again you've been honest about those highs and lows what does that meant to you as an entrepreneur to put your reality the feelings the highs and lows out there for people to consume and yeah. to judge 
I mean, it's really freeing in a way because my whole, you know, I've been able to kind of tell, I haven't controlled my narrative, but I've always had a platform to tell my own story. Um, so there's, you know, when you're in the public eye, there's just, there can be a lot of conjecture about who you are, especially when there's someone pretending to be you on a Netflix series. And it's like, is that funny? Did that really happen? Is she really like that? I mean, it's just been, it, it was really kind of a mind, you know, that, um, <laughs> but I'm like really grateful for social media and this community who followed me kind of high, through the highs and lows. And, um, I'm just not someone who's going to hide out and let my story be written for me. Right. Like you have your whole thing is own your story. Right. And that's, um, something more of us, I think need to do, and it's not an easy thing to do. Um, it would be easy to have retreated and been like, okay, man, like this, this sucks. I'm going to go disappear for a while. But I was like, girl boss is exciting. You know, I want to go build something great. Like there's such great momentum. People want this. And so in some regard, it feels like a little bit of a calling for me to move on and be resilient. But I also know there's a certain amount of me that's like, okay, well, this is, I'm just going to stay busy. <laughs> um, cause that, generally I'm happier when I'm busy. Um, so that's part of it, I think. Um, yeah. Well, you know, thinking of creating business class, um, using the experience that you've had with growing communities, growing businesses, growing networks. Um, like you said, there's one option to just be like, I'm out, I've done this. I've done it a couple of times now. I've proved it to myself and to maybe others who were doubting me. Um, but instead of doing that, you've created business class. Tell me about the branding around it even. How did you come up with this concept? Oh my God, it's and, so fun. And it decided so fun. to like put it all out there. Like you have all this information and instead of being like, I, I own it, I want to share it. Yeah. I gotta, there's, me about there's, branding. Yeah. It's no sweat for me to just harvest what it is that I've learned. And it's kind of, you know, it's my responsibility in some ways. Like I've um, kind of endured a lot of, I don't want to say firsts, but, um, you know, I've paved a very challenging path for, I think women to experience the highs and lows of business. And it's just like, I've done that publicly. Like I'm not the first person to have done that, but I probably did it louder than anybody else. Um, and I don't want other entrepreneurs to learn things as hard as I learn them. Of course, there's things I really think you should learn the hard way. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm not an MBA. I'm not, you know, it's like, I do believe that learning on the go, being tactile is really like a great way to learn, but also had I had a plan, um, I, I think my, my business and my trajectory would have gone very different and maybe it would have been not as great, but I kind of, at the very least, I would have had a little bit more control over what happened next. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, that, that toolkit is something nobody gives you. Nobody tells you, this is what you need to learn about finance. You know, this is what you need to learn about legal to protect yourself. This is how you uh, hire an employee. And this is what you need to put together to hold them accountable. And this is how you have those conversations. Mm -hmm. You know, this is how you create an amazing brand and market to people and get to know your customer and validate your product. And like that stuff can take so long and so much money to just spinning your wheels in a vacuum, not knowing, you know, like where to go next. But the branding, yes, it's called business class, which sounds like at first you hear it and you're like, oh, you have an, an online business course called business class. That's the least creative thing ever. And then it's like, no, it's airline themed, like it's business class. So everything's kind of Pan Am themed. I'm dressed, you know, in like a stewardess outfit. So it's really like making learning fun. And there's just an endless amount of puns that you can come up with like, you know, fly high, you know, buckle your seatbelt, turbulence. You know, it's just like, it's uh, leave your baggage at the door, right? Like, it's just so, so fun to riff on um, the airline, the kind of aviation um, references. Yeah, that's definitely caught my eye. When I first started seeing some of that um, branding going out on Instagram, I had that initial reaction, like business class. Okay, it's a business class. And then to see the, the brand kind of unfolds with what you've talked about, some of the naming of some of the programs and then 
seeing your videos and like this, you know, eating nuts or having coffee. I'm like, I've never flown business class, but that branding made me want to both fly and enroll. Tell me a little bit about some of the entrepreneurs who have taken business class and what kind of feedback you're getting about this new venture. Totally. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing um, because we just did our first cohort of students in the fall and now they have, you know, it's been a few months since they finished the program. We didn't have testimonials. We didn't have like proof that business class really worked for people when we launched it in the fall. And so it's so gratifying to hear things like I have an MBA and this was better than an MBA or like what I learned in 10 weeks, I learned in like my entrepreneurship, like, you know, degree in college or you know, a lot of people are, are finding clarity. Um, so that's kind of what has to happen first. And I think, you know, a lot of us have ideas or we're kind of accidental entrepreneurs, but actually honing in on what it is that you want to do makes it so much easier and more efficient to actually do it. And that's kind of where we start in business class. I mean, there's people who are like, I launched my handbag store and like sold $1,500 worth of, was it 15? No, I think it was $15,000. Anyway, I have to like, I don't want to like speak for anybody, but there's like crazy testimonials now. So um, we, and like, so, so it's exciting to, to have those, I guess, for the first time and really um, see the results because business class is an investment um, and it would be great for people to leave inspired, right? Someone goes to a conference, they hear you talk, they're going to learn stuff, but they're not going to be able to, you know, it's like they need more to probably implement it. You know, and to have that guidance um, and more time um, to do that with, I think is uh, a really valuable thing. That's wonderful. I'm, I have my cell phone here, but it's not because I'm like checking Twitter. I want to see if you've got some questions from okay. folks who are watching. <laughs> um, I want to check in with the team. But before we actually dive into questions, I want everyone again to know that we want you to put your comments and your questions in the Zoom chat or on Facebook because we have a giveaway. Um, for those who answer or ask a question and tell us a little bit about your business. Tell us about your branding. Um, we're going to pick a winner out of those folks who have shared some comments and, and, and details about what they're doing um, and provide you with some assets, maybe some business cards, some posters, some stuff, some swag. Paper. <laughs> we all need that stuff. So, paper. Again, um, please feel free to jump in and ask a question um, from the crew or for Sophia at this point. But I wonder, Sophia, you know, thinking about your um, your branding again with business class, um, how is it that you came to decide on business class? And I'm, I'm saying this question in a weird way, but it's just like, you know, there's so many names that are out there. There's so many yeah. things you can go with. But was it something that you saw? Like I saw a plane go by and I thought about flying or did you hire a team? I think is such a huge yeah. issue. And we go through like a whole naming exercise in business class, which is really kind of like oblique and weird and Googling and comparing words that aren't necessarily related and things can rhyme or they can be references or they can be puns. And I, I love naming things and I've only really been able to name a few things in my career. So I love seeing people like, you know, hundreds of people name things over the course of the course. Um, you know, for in the online course world, you know, I've done a bunch of research and what is recommended is that you name your course something that is actually descriptive of what it is and not just like, you know, um, you know, it could be like fly high course, you know, but then it's like, what is it? You know, yeah. own your story is very okay. Like got it. You know, you don't have to explain it. Um, and that's what, kind of like what best practices are which is kind of was kind of challenging because I was like I was on a walk with my long-term partner boyfriend and I was like oh my god you know self-made school founder university like it was just like I'm pretty sure all this stuff exists like you know entrepreneur academy it's just like oh my god this all sounds so generic and I was like <laughs> business class I mean again sounds generic and then I was like oh being like it was just kind of like one of those moments um where and you have to to, to like name things or sometimes come up with creative concepts you just have to like spit out like the dumbest stuff and really just let 
you know, let it kind of let it rip and be okay being embarrassed in a brainstorm saying, okay, yeah, yeah, whoa, 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 no, that's actually really bad. But then something really good could come right after it. That's like that kind of teed, you know, the bad idea teed up the good idea. Mm -hmm. Um, So I just believe in kind of like throwing as much out on the table in the early stages of creating your brand or naming your business. And then, you know, then really kind of piecing it together and like what's working, you know, what's working about this. Great. Let's run with that. Um, Because it's it's really, it's really not like a direct, it's not as simple as like, let's write a business plan. That's not simple, but like, it's not (laughs) a structured you know, it's, it's, it can be really challenging. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. Because of, you know, in the end it's up to interpretation and sometimes that first impression can get people to say, Oh, this is interesting. I want to dive in and find out what this is, or I don't know what that is. And I don't even want to take the time to go down that rabbit hole. But I think you found a lot of success with the naming thing, nasty gal, girl boss, um, and now business class. I think you're, you're, you're on it. (laughs) Clearly you've got, you've got a gift. Fun. Now, you mentioned um, my workshop, Own Your Story, a couple of times. Own Your Story is a personal brand story workshop that I've shared at a couple of, of Girl Boss rallies. Um, and just to give our viewers a little bit of, of history, um, Sophia, was it 2018? Um, I was first being able to share my story on the platform, Girl Boss, in the summer of 2018. And um, I was I'm not some super famous popular person, um, but you and your team really believed in the message and um, own your story and what I was trying to share, beginning with just women and really growing to include um, lots of folks from um, corporate America to nonprofits to startups. And it's been huge for me. And I think you are a living example. You have demonstrated your women supporting women, creating opportunities for us to gain resources, access um, specialties and specialists that we would not have access to otherwise. And so I just want to give you a shout out and thank you for that. It has been monumental in my career that you allowed me to go on the girl boss stage a few times and on your website and for joining me today. Yeah. So um, thanks for, thanks for everything. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I want to bring in Lauren Jennings to the conversation. Lauren is another person who provided a platform for me and my workshop. She's the founder of the Best Me Conference, which was, I describe it as like a black girl magic conference that happened in 2019 in Oakland. Of course, in 2020, things changed so that events didn't um, occur. But I want to talk to her about what she's building because I think you guys have some similarities. So Lauren, hey, there she is. Hey, Lauren, how you doing? Hi, good morning, Olivia. Hi, Sophia. Good to see you. Yeah, Lauren's also on the West Coast. So she's, her copy is California. (laughs) <laughs> um, but Lauren, I just kind of described the Best Me Conference as a Black Girl Magic kind of conference. How do you yeah. describe it? Yeah, so it's exactly that. So the Best Me Conference, I always say it is a conference and a platform, a community for Black women by Black women. Um, our goals and why we created the conference was for confidence, clarity, um, and connections for Black women to connect with themselves and also with one another. So exactly what you just said. And tell me about why you were inspired to do this Black Girl Magic thing. I know Black girls right now are kind of in style. That's how I describe it. Our voices are being heard, our expertise, they're being leaned into. But why for you did you think it was something that you wanted to create? Yeah, so it's interesting because I always say that everything in my life has led me to where I am today. And really the spark that promoted me wanting to create the Best Me Conference is quite literally no different. So in my full-time career, I am in commercial real estate um, and commercial real estate is a heavily male dominated industry, like really every industry, Um, but specifically commercial real estate is a heavily white male dominated industry. And so in 2016, um, I joined a professional organization that was geared towards advancing women within the commercial real estate industry. I was extremely excited. I got involved right away. I joined the leadership team. I quickly joined the board. Um, and then I also, at the same time, quickly realized that I was one of, I think at that time, two Black women who were a part of the organization. We were roughly a 150-member organization, so only one of two. Um, and then contrast that with in 2018, I joined, I was invited to join a philanthropic organization that was specifically geared towards Black women. And I remember after the first few events of this, the second organization, I remember one day I sat in my car and I literally cried. 
Um, I cried because that was one of the first times that I had been in the room of all black women. I felt seen, I felt heard, I felt understood. And I remember shortly thereafter, I said to myself, is that I want all black women to really have that experience. Um, far, you know, far often as women and specifically as black women, we're the only ones in the room and we can do it. Um, but you know, there's nothing like walking into a room, seeing all black women um, and not having to translate or, you know, or, or explain what we've been through, um, just walking in and feeling understood. So that literally led me to wanting to create the Best Me Conference. I appreciate you kind of detailing that. Yeah, it's a, it's a rare thing to be able to walk in a space yeah. and have your shoulders be able to drop and just to yeah. feel like people understand you without having to say anything from someone who yeah. shared my workshop and actually attended. It was a wonderful feeling for me to walk in that space as well. Tell me a little bit about going from I want to do this thing to what literally happening. How did you activate networks and get people to sign up and all of those things? Yeah, it was it was. It first took me overcoming my own fear because for the longest time I said, well, I don't think I should do this. I never had any intent of planning a conference. I was actually looking for a conference to attend. So it did not start with me wanting to like, I'm gonna go start this conference. I was looking for something to attend and everything that I found I found that I didn't fit. So there were conferences that were for women of color or for black women, but you know, you had to be an entrepreneur, those in leadership or those in the arts. And I didn't fit in any one of those boxes. So it took for me just getting over my fear and saying that like, I am capable and I can do this. And then it really started, it really then took off from me having conversations with people, like pitching my idea, saying like, am I crazy for thinking I can do this? Like, would you want to attend this? And when I tell you doors just started opening, um, doors literally started opening. And that's where I said, okay, there's a tremendous need for this in our community. So it went from, from not me creating it for myself, but me really creating this for other black women. And from there, it just, doors, like I said, doors opened and, and we got to October, 2019 with the conference in person. <laughs> And congratulations on that. Like I said, I thank attended you. a event. Yes, thank you for attending. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm grateful about I Anytime anyone says you can do the workshop on your story, I'm like, when, where? I will get on Zoom. I'll put some lipstick on. I'll sit far enough away from the camera so I don't scare anyone with my giant forehead. Um, so thank you for that. But, you know, as I, I was speaking with Sophia earlier about the challenges around 2020 and having to potentially pivot and yeah. look at other to create community or to do the thing that you love. Tell me a little bit how, about how you adjusted what you were doing and the community that you've grown from the Best Me Conference, given the challenges we had last year. Yeah, so our, our first conference was October 2019. So it was literally right before the pandemic hit. And it's like we were on such a high, I was on such a high, October, November, December, just being able to you know, take in everything that we created. And so in January, we were kickstarting the plan for 2020. And then of course, everything stopped. And so um, we, like everyone else had to pivot. And, and for the first few months, it was like, well, what are we going to do? We created this community. How do we keep everyone engaged? So um, like others, we have now transitioned into hosting virtual conversations. So we did a virtual series in April. Um, that was the 10 week virtual series where we're still continuing our same content, bringing on black women thought leaders, black women experts, and just having real conversations. Um, and even now we, in December, we started our second virtual series called We're the Ones We've Been Waiting For. And um, it's an Instagram live conversation where again, we're talking with black women who literally took no for an answer and became the change they wanted to see in the world. So we're doing that. Um, we're also getting um, in the beginning stages of planning a master class series. So similar to a little bit of what, of what you're doing, Sophia, um, in the sense of being able to bring in thought leaders and experts in their field um, and bring education and training to our community. So definitely having to pivot um, it took some time, but you know, it's what we do is so important. We had to keep it going. Like I said, not just for us, but for each other. Oh, I hear that. Well, it, like you said, even to Sophia calling it out, there's some similarity too. I just wanted to create an opportunity for you to ask Sophia any questions you might have. 
about maintaining and building a community. And I, I'm going to reel that in because I'm asking the question for you. But I just want, like, I think there's some um, some value in you all kind of having that dialogue. Yeah, no, for sure. Thank you for the opportunity. And my question is exactly what Olivia was was gearing towards. So we had the conference in October 2019. You know, we created this community. And for, for me and, and for us, the struggle has been like, how do we keep our community engaged by, you know, producing content? Because I still have a full-time career, <laughs> um, you know, so having to stay, keep everyone engaged. But then also my goal is to leverage our community for corporate sponsorship. So I'd love, you know, if you have any tidbits of like, how do we take what we created um, for one, keep engagement and then two, leverage it for corporate sponsorship in the future. Yeah, totally. Um, well, congratulations on everything. Thank you. Um, community, yeah. I mean, I feel like community is like such a buzzword or you know yeah. something, but it's just incredibly important. We've gone from like users, online users, to followers, uh, to a, you know, to communities, and that's really what you know. There's there's so many platforms of that have allowed real communities to emerge sometimes accidentally based on the mm -hmm. niche or, um, you know, often intentionally. And there's so many great platforms to own those conversations. Um, Instagram's one of them, but you're lost in an algorithm, right? So yeah. to keep people engaged, you're hoping that your community is seeing the content, you know, unless they're turning on post notifications, it's just, it's not the best place to manage relationships at scale. Um, or anything that really feels one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of suggest taking your community off of, at least off of like Instagram, if that's where you are. So Facebook groups are incredibly powerful. Um, and at business class, we use something called Mighty Networks, mm -hmm. um, which is a really great, it's, you know, there's a free version, there's a paid version, and it's really kind of white label. It's your own community. So people get logins and, you know, they can go just to your community and you can do, there's a feed, they can have profiles, you know, you can post updates, it will email them. There's just like, you can create topics and groups within that. So, um, and I think, so engaging your community in a place where, you know, when they log in, they're going to see stuff specific to what it is, why it is that they joined your community. I think that's really yeah. important. Um, I think in terms of sponsorships, you know, sponsorships from, um, you know, corporate sponsorships or B2Bs very, you know, it's very different from, um, from selling kind of brand sponsorships. Like we're going to post about your brand on our Instagram. Um, I haven't done a ton of it, but what I've heard is that sometimes they can be bigger, like bigger checks. Um, you know, every company has a budget for DEI now, mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, it's, it's just an important place to, to be, to be focusing, um, and bringing, you know, and creating spaces for, uh, their employees who may not have that inside their companies or for you to be teaching those companies how to do that for their employees. It's a really important thing to be doing. Obviously, you know that, um, the customer becomes someone on, you know, you're dealing with someone who's on like the HR leadership team, you know, some companies have, you know, a lot of them have focused on, you know, have, have someone focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, but I think the challenge is getting to those people because you obviously have built a platform um, that, that they should be participating in. Um, I think there, I think it's, you know, you, you'll have to, Kind of wrap what it is that you're doing around their needs in some ways so it's not as simple as like a cut and paste like oh we'll post something right yeah or yeah ban ad. um so i think in some ways it's a little it's a little bit more challenging um because there's like you know you're just dealing with their internal employees just like um but at the same time um you're able to kind of make change you're not just you're not just preaching to the choir right like you have your community and your engaged community and people that you've attracted uh, it's just as important, if not more, to kind of like subvert organizations who have no idea what they should be doing or have no access to what it is that you're doing or haven't found ways to, you know, maybe they think that they're inclusive, 
um, but they haven't been shown exactly <laughs> what that means, and they haven't been shown that by a black woman. Um, so, uh, so I think it's, I think it's, you know, it's an area of opportunity. I mean, it's just like any words that you use is just like such an understatement at this point. Um, yeah. And should be such table stakes, um, which is why I think you'll experience, you know, less friction doing what you're doing than you might have 10 years ago. Um, so it's a, it's a good time to be shaking money out of these companies. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for that. I, I appreciate you both sharing some insight into what you've both been building. I have one question that I got. I only have one time for one question. I'm going to pose it to both of you. What is something that you do on the daily that keeps you kind of centered and helps propel you towards success? Something that you hold on to that you make sure that you do on the daily? Lauren, can you start? Yeah, so that's a great question. We just talked about this um, on one of our virtual series is I find time for stillness. And it sounds like so simple, but it literally is the best thing I can do, whether it's five to 10 minutes, I find time for stillness every single morning, just to recenter myself and just to make sure that I can hear my own voice and I can hear my true self. Um, so that for me is a winner every single morning. Stillness, I like it. What about you, Sophia? What I just want to say that is a really hard thing to do. And it seems so easy. Like I was talking to a life coach recently and I was like, that's what I want to do. And she was like, given that's so easy, what do you think? You know, it was just like, why are you telling me this is easy? This is why it's obviously I'm having a hard time with it. And I think people go to her being like, I want to train for a marathon or, you know, stuff that isn't quite as easy, but that's, you know, what's easy is different for everybody. Yeah. Um, I'm still trying to work that one out something I do every day. And I, you know, it's, it used to be a chore and now it's something I just absolutely love is walking my dogs. And I know this is just like, so basic, but you know, I take them and I, I like talk to them sometimes. And it's just like, you know, I do it at a you know specific time of the day where the sun is setting and it's, everything's kind of rosy and the plant colors are just kind of popping and um, it's just like, it's right before the sun sets and it's, and it's just like such a beautiful time and thing to be able to do. And I mean, that's at like 4.35. So it kind of forces me away from my desk earlier than I normally, I think would step away. And sometimes I go back after dinner, but I really try to make sure that, you know, I do, I, I do that without fail every day. It's the simple things, Sophia. I think yeah. you're that right. Walking your dog at a particular time of day, taking a break. That's the perfect thing, I think, to kind of keep yourself fueled and to stay you. I, to answer the question, not that you guys asked, but I'll tell you what I do. I, I have coffee every morning and meditate and pray every morning, seven days a week. Um, and if I have to get up a little bit earlier to do it, I do it. And the days that I accidentally miss it, if I rushed or something, I feel off. And all of a sudden around one o'clock, I'm like, why am I feeling? Oh, it's because I didn't meditate this morning. So Three things people can do. I think they're all related. Stillness, walk your dog, get outside, create that opportunity for you to just have some of it own time, listen to your own thoughts, or say things out loud to dogs, turtles, cats, whatever is walking by, whatever works for you. Um, I just want to say again, thank you both for joining me on um, Vista Friends Home Office Hours Live. And a quick shout out, Sophia, tell me where people can sign up for business class. Yeah, so we're opening the doors again on in March. Um, and it's just takebusinessclass.com. Awesome. And Lauren, where can we find um, and join in on these sessions that you're doing on Instagram? Yeah, so our um, Instagram and Facebook are at the Best Me Conference, and our website is www.thebestmeconference.com. Yay, thanks so much. Thank you both for joining me again. And for everyone watching, please come back in two weeks. We're going to be talking about branding with some amazing guests. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.